Hey everyone, Charlie here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. This is day whatever of Veda, so let's keep it going. Uh, today, before work, I went to see the uh, American live-action production of uh, Ghost in the Shell. Now, as those of you who are at all interested in the property probably already know, this is a production that was steeped in controversy between things like whitewashing and changes to the story. I'm not interested at all in diving into those things in those videos. In, in this video, this is just a review of the movie. I'm not going to get into the political or the social stuff unless it has to actually do with sort of the, the story that's trying to be told here. So. Uh, that being said, I also found it really difficult to sort of avoid any of the reviews going into this. I, I did in fact watch a couple reviews before watching this, some spoiler free ones, um, and they did not have very nice things to say, but I, I wanted to sort of clear that out of my head so that when I went to actually see the movie that it would be, you know, I could, I could look at it with fresh and sort of um, as untainted eyes as I possibly could. Um, whether or not I succeeded with that, I, I think I did because I have to say, um, while I don't think I would call this a good movie, that's the short version of this of this review, right? I don't think I would call this a good movie, but I don't think it, it's the style, the, the steaming pile of dog shit that a lot of people have made it out to be. Um, I came out of the theater being like, okay, well, you know, that was that was fun to watch. Do I think I'm gonna buy it on Blu-ray or something like that? Probably not. But as the for, for the particulars of why I feel that way, um, stay tuned going forward here. But I want to point out that there are gonna be spoilers in this review because because, because, because they're important for the things that I want to talk about. And another thing, if you see me looking down a lot, it's because I, I wrote down a bunch of notes because I wanted to be sure that, you know, I gave you a, a thought out review instead of just sort of spitting thoughts at the camera. Right, now if you were to ask me to sum up the Ghost in the Shell movie, Scarlett Johansson's vehicle here, in one sentence I would say it is a movie of great ideas executed poorly. And uh, to talk about this, I want to really talk about the good things first, because there are some good things, like I said, about the movie um, that, that I thought were really, really great. And there were points in the movie where I was like, wow, when I saw it, you know. The most impressive thing about this movie is the world building. Um, the, the city that you, th that you see, I think it's, it's supposed to be like future Shanghai, or something that looks very much like Shanghai. Um, and, you know, the, the way the billboards are moving and the colors and all this sort of like the art and and the costume design and everything else like that, it makes you feel like you're in the world and that, that is a world unto itself. And admittedly, a lot of that comes from the source material, right? The 1995 uh, Ghost in the Shell movie. Um, and so it's not, it's not wholly original, but then you consider not just sort of like the, the design of the cities or the way the major looks, her costumes look and things like that, but also like the animatronics and robotics work that was done by, I think it was uh, Weta in New Zealand. And it's just, it's absolutely incredible to see because it really brings you into the world, right? In addition to this, the set designs, like when they're in like an underground layer, so to speak, of Yakuza trying to find Kuze, the, the main like villain of the movie, you know, it's suitably atmospheric. The lighting is great. It feels dingy and kind of dirty and so, so, so wonderfully cyberpunk that you can't help but get sort of sucked into the world. So that part at least I thought was perfection. It was really, really nicely done. And sort of extending from this is that the way the sort of sets were used, uh, not just the sets, but the world where was used in, um, in some of the fight scenes. Now, I just mentioned like the underground Yakuza den kind of thing, and there's a fight scene that is set in there in this sort of lighting where Scarlett Johansson is sort of, uh, her character is being electrocuted by like these dudes with like cattle prod kind of things. And the only lighting in that hallway is sort of like this, you know, typical like rays of light breaking through the darkness kind of thing. And then it's just the flashing of the cattle prods as she's, as she's hit with these weapons and, or hit or, or being missed by the weapons even. And the lighting and the way the the surroundings are used and everything in the fight scenes, it was, I was like, oh man, this is just so awesome to look. I thought it was really, really, uh, really, really impressive, you know. Um, not to say all the fight scenes are perfect or, or, or fresh. Um, I did have a few moments where I was like, okay, well, this is actually kind of boring. But some of the other scenes, I was like, okay, well, the choreography, the way she's sliding around and moving around, a lot like her Scarlet Witch, uh, not, excuse me, Scarlet Witch, uh, the Black Widow character. Um, I, I dug it. I was really into it. Now, admittedly, I don't have a lot of nice things to say about the acting in this movie, but Beat Takeshi, who um, you will absolutely recognize if you watch any Japanese TV over here or if you're familiar with the movie Battle Royale, because uh, the guy's in like everything, it seems like. 
his character in this, he's like the head of Section 9 in this movie. He's kind of a badass. He's the only dude who ever speaks Japanese in the entire movie, and when he speaks Japanese to people, they speak English to him, and then he speaks Japanese back to them. And it's really confusing. I don't understand why that happens, but as far as, as the acting he does and the things that he does in the movie, his character is just awesome, and it's really cool to see、um, Takeshi be like that kind of character. I really, really enjoyed seeing his. His outing for sure. Now, one of the big complaints that people had about this movie, and one of the complaints that I sort of had before seeing it, is I didn't like the idea of the story being changed too much or the themes being changed too much. But actually, the way storytelling works, right? The way, the way humans tell stories is that there's like a common thread to stories, right? But they, they always change over time, right? They change maybe to tell a new kind of parable. Or they change to warn of new things that have come out in a modern age, right? And the original Ghost in the Shell movie was made in 1995, right? Which puts it 22 years ago.、Um, and things have changed since then, right? You've had the, the mass adaptation,、uh, uh, excuse me, adoption of the internet. You've had the rise of social media and sort of hive mentality and all these other things that come with it. And one of the most interesting things that.、Uh, Is done in this movie is sort of the forwarding of this idea that because these sort of technologies exist that sort of bring us together, what we're at risk of, despite the fact that when you go on Twitter, you can find plenty of weird people doing their, their own thing and stuff like that, is that ultimately it is a threat to our individuality.、Uh, as you've seen when sort of anything happens, right? When like the hive mind of Twitter gets a hold of somebody who had some kind of like snafu, right? Uh, maybe maybe they, they, they said something racist or they said something sexist, and people just swarm upon those people and ruin their lives, right? And, and that, that last part there doesn't really have anything to do with the point. But these people coming together, maybe not always even understanding why they're angry or, or why they're trying to destroy a person or something like that. It's something that is sort of put forward in this movie as like, okay, well, all this technology is great. And then, of course, in this movie, it's about cybernetic enhancements and. and、uh, Cybernetic limbs and all this other stuff, press, prostheses. And, you know, it's really interesting thinking about okay, well, technology can do so many things for us, but what do we lose in that, in that,、uh, in that deal, right? So it's not exactly a revolutionary idea, but some of the ways that I think they could have explored it、um, and ways that they sort of teased maybe they're going to go down. I thought it was really, really interesting. So it had me thinking about a lot of things after, after the movie about the idea of individuality and in the age of, of、uh, unifying technology and stuff like that. Along the same lines, there is, of course, the exploration of what it means to be human and all that stuff. Again, it's kind of a tried and true science fiction trope, cyberpunk, not so much as a, a cyberpunk specifically trope, but definitely a science fiction trope about what it means to be human when we can change ourselves, right? Um, is a person who has their brain put into a cybernetic body, are they still human?、Um, you know? And I, I always really enjoy those kinds of stories that, that explore that kind of theme. So, in all of those regards, I thought the movie did some things really well. Like I said, the, the world was great,、uh, Takeshi was awesome, and there's some really, really interesting ideas put forward in this that do actually make you think. But ultimately, like I said in the beginning of this review, this is a movie. Of great ideas executed really poorly. Now, part of this has to do with the writing.、Um, the dialogue, especially, is just so freaking painful in spots. Sometimes you know it's fine, it's, it's normal dialogue, it's nothing to write home about. But there are other times where the dialogue is just so bad, and particularly for Scarlett Johansson's character, who's meant to be like kind of emotionless because she's, she's a, a cyborg, right? Um, in, in a lot of scenes when she's meant to be emotionless, like that emotionless acting tied with what she's saying, it almost comes off as laughable. You're like, what kind of thing? And then some of like, the, the lines given to her,、uh, I think the character's name is Dr. u l e She's like the, 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 the mother character in, in this film. And some of the things that she's given to say to Scarlett Johansson's character are just so. Freaking trite, and I sat there, I was going, like, oh,、uh, all right, like, I get it. Like, and that's the thing. It's not just a problem with the dialogue, which, like I said, is really cringeworthy. It's that the writing doesn't really offer much in the way of, like, an original story, right? Like, you've seen that dynamic before. The mentor character, do they have allegiance to, like, 
Section 9 or to like the greater company or whatever, are they going to turn against the daughter character or the mentee character or whatever? But ultimately, you know, they're not going to, right? It's just so, it was very formulaic in that sense. And you knew in the end, of course, what was going to happen was that, you know, Scarlett Johansson was going to come out on top, right? The the ScarJo character is definitely going to come up on top because they probably want to make this into a franchise. Now, whether or not that's going to happen because the box office and the reviews and everything, it's, it seems uh, doubtful at best. But you can definitely see, like, you know how the movie's going to end is the point I'm making. And even, like, most stories, right, you can, you can, you can probably guess. Most movies, at least, I should say. Novels are can more easily lead people astray, I think, uh, or at least do so in a much better way. But m most movies, right, you have an idea of how it's going to end, it's particularly if you know, like, the, the actor has, like, a three-picture deal or something like that, right? Like, you know where everything is going. But good writing sort of takes you out of that, right? Even if you can kind of expect where they'll be at the end of the movie, you don't know how they're going to get there. And in this movie, it's just like, okay, the setup, you know the betrayal's coming, you know the character's gonna have like some kind of rejection that's gonna give them a change of heart, and you know by at the end everything's gonna be resolved and she's gonna be fine, right? And that's the problem, is that you you not only know where she's going to end up, you know how, in so many ways, how she's going to get there. And the big reveals, you know all of them before they happen, so the writing is just it's it's sheer it's too sheer so now add into the fact that the the performances are are very uneven right there are times when like you like you do truly feel for the major the major in this movie uh, Scarlett Johansson's character you you sit there and you think okay well I get why she's pissed or I get how she's feeling right now but then other times I think it's just like okay what like this is the most bland acting I've ever seen and it's not just her Many of the characters in there, like, it's so uneven, or the way the lines are delivered is just like... And it could be direction, I don't know, but... Yikes, man. Yikes. And... So you have... You have uneven acting, you have writing that is just met, and then you have a terrible score, right? And I don't know if you've ever tried to watch, like, on YouTube, I know you can watch, like, Star Wars or whatever without the music, or you can watch a lot of movies without the music. But imagine, like, watching something like... Uh, Schindler's List, or Gone with the Wind, or something like that without the music, right? Or Star Wars, too, or Indiana Jones, like all these things where the music is so integral to the way the story is told and your understanding of characters, maybe maybe internal feelings and stuff like that, right? And the music in this is just so bland. And particularly coming from uh, the original movie, when you have like those really kind of trippy uh, Japanese like folk singing, I, I forget what the style is called, but it's basically a mix of like old, um, like canticle story, uh, song mixed with like Japanese lyrics and traditional Japanese singers and stuff like that and it's it's really crazy and it it stands out right and I'm a big believer that a good story a good film needs to have a good score to go along with it right now I mentioned briefly the whitewashing controversy um, at the beginning of this video and the only thing that I want to say about it is if you're going to go with Scarlett Johansson as, as the actress or if you're going to go with it with an actress who isn't um, who, who, who wasn't the Japanese actress, right, to portray Motoko Kusanagi, um, I think you need to really go for it. You really need to embrace that this is a different looking character, that they have different backgrounds and stuff like that. And this is one of the big spoilers that's in this, in this review. But the way they do it in this movie is, right, like Scarlett Johansson from the beginning, she doesn't know where she came from. And as it turns out, she's like this character who's like, I think she's kind of like a pseudo-revolutionary or at least like an intellectual who's writing about the dangers of technology and stuff like that. And the company that, that makes these robots uh, takes her and takes her brain and wipes her memory and stuff like that. And whatever, that's, that's, that's fine, I guess. But who do they take her brain from? You guessed it. They take her brain from uh, a young woman, this runaway revolutionary or whatever, named Motoko Kusanagi, right? The name of the original... Um, of, of the original major from from the original Ghost in the Shell movie and so then that to me causes kind of a problem right because you could forgive like okay well they're they're transplanting this Japanese woman's brain into into like a a, a white female body and, you know whatever and you can talk about the problems with that in a different video or whatever but then there are other Japanese characters that had the same thing done to them and it's like, okay, well, what are the chances of that happening? Like in the society where all these people look different and whatever, 
And so I just thought it was like, okay, well, if you're just forget the background, it's just like, whatever, okay, well, forget the Kusanagi background, create something new and just avoid all these issues that come with trying to shoehorn in that story to somehow please people that are really pissed off about it, right? It just, it didn't work for me. I was like, oh, are you fucking kidding me right now? Kind of thing. So anyway, ugh, so cringeworthy when that came about and I was like, Part of me too was like, oh, this is kind of sweet. Like she's finding her roots and then you find out what her roots are and you're like, Jesus Christ, why, why? Mm. All right, well, last thing I want to say because it's going to already be probably kind of a long video. Um, we mentioned some of those ideas about individuality, right? And about finding humanity. Is, is the major human, is she not human, whatever? Are the other enhanced people human? Are they not human? And the problem with this movie, right? We talked about how they're good ideas with poor execution. The movie spells everything out for you. And I mean that almost in a literal sense. One of the first scenes is like Scarlett Johansson worrying about like how she's different from everybody else or whatever. And the doctor is like, don't worry, you're still a human. Stop thinking about your humanity, blah, blah, blah. Or like, when will you accept that you're human, right? Like, you don't need to spell out the character's internal thoughts or motivations. Right? It's like, I don't understand in movies when they need to tell you instead of showing you, right? Like that's, that's a big writing rule in general is like, show not tell, right? And story, t film, filmmaking is a visual medium. So you always, you can do so many things. You can show the motivations or you can show her feelings about, about her humanity or her lack of humanity or whatever without spelling it out. You don't have to like, spell out the central character problem of the movie within the first 30 seconds and then keep doing it throughout the movie, right? And, and like, an, another thread was, like, uh, it's not... Basically, it was a lot like the Dark Knight uh, trilogies thing where it was, like, you know, it's not who I am underneath, it's what I do that defines me kind of thing. And that was just this recurring, like, hit you over the head with it thing. And, like, the... That you can still be an individual and still use technology even if it brings you together and blah blah blah. I was like, the idea is good and there are really good conversations to be had about it, right? But the way that you just keep beating people over the head with it, man, there's no like, there's no nuance to the storytelling. It's like, okay, here's the character's problem. Let's spell it out for you 50 times to the point where you're like, oh my god, like how many times do I need to hear this? Like, stop whining almost at that point, you know what I mean? And so it just makes for this really uninteresting, unsatisfying, non-exploratory, like, character study in a way. And so, mm. anyway, that's why I said that it's an okay movie, it's not a good movie. There are some good things to be found in this film, I think. And I would probably watch this movie again if it was on. Again, I wouldn't buy, like, the, the Blu-ray. If it's on Netflix, I'll probably watch it again uh, some, some Sunday when I'm writing or whatever in the background, or if I'm just, like drunk and I feel like watching something or whatever but yeah so was it worth like the 1600 yen I paid for it sure to see it once and to see some of the really cool set pieces and the world building and the fights and stuff like that for sure does it do justice to the source material does it do justice to its name I don't think so but of course uh, guys if you have seen this movie let me know down in the comments below what kind of conclusions you've drawn for yourself do you agree with me do you think I'm full of shit you know, whatever. Let me know. I want to talk to you about it. So please like and share this video if you did in fact like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, keep an eye out over the next few weeks, guys. I've talked a little bit about this. My new series is coming out. It's uh, called Tetsugogo. It's about the philosophy of big music properties or big uh, anime movies or things like that. And uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about is the philosophy of this movie and also the philosophy of the original Ghost in the Shell movie. It came out in 1995. That's in a couple weeks. And uh, on that note, guys, thanks always for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Cheers.